Good morning, everyone. It is another beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. And I'm excited. And I'm nervous. Today, we'll be crossing over Bear Rocks and Knife's Edge. How much further than that, I do not know. I'm trying to uh, keep an eye on the weather uh, because the next day will be Lehigh Gap and that climb coming out of there, which uh, can be sketchy when the rain is hitting on the rocks and when the rocks are slick. And if it's raining tomorrow, I want to time it right so I'm going up out of that at the right time. Also, would like to see some really good views there. Don't want it too cloudy or foggy or anything. So I'm gonna keep my eye on the weather. It would be a really long day to push through today and probably not gonna happen because I would end up hitting in the dark. And then what's the point of climbing up out of it except for the fact you're summiting that and conquering it, which that's enough on its own. But I would like to see the great views there at the same time. So. No point of doing that in the dark. So I'll probably set myself up in a good position to be able to do that first thing in the morning based on weather. If it's something where the weather is going to be maybe rainy in the morning and not at night or in the afternoon, then maybe I'll time it to where they're in the afternoon. But I don't know. I'll keep an eye on that. You know me. No point of making a plan now because I will not stick to that plan <laughs> and change it 50 times. As for now, pushing through the trail and the rocks and whatever else comes today. But I know Knife's Edge is gonna to be today and that's gonna be a fun one. I wouldn't say challenging, but definitely challenge, more challenging than a lot of the trail or some, a good portion of the trail as you're going across a rock edge, basically, a ridge line edge that is rocks and sharp rocks and the kind of rocks that's tipped up sideways where you don't have a lot of footholds and everything. So it's going to be a fun day. Uh, you know, 20, 25 miles or so. Whatever I feel like doing. Who knows? Maybe I'll go 10 and say, I'm done for the day. <laughs> you never know about me. But I do know it is an absolutely gorgeous day so far. I would say probably 60 degrees, bright and sunny, hardly a cloud in the sky, a, just a little gentle breeze. Uh, and I think it's supposed to be like in the mid 60s for a high. So yeah, it's probably actually 50 right now. Uh, I don't know why I said 60. That's what the high today is going to be like in the mid 60s. So it's definitely not that warm yet, or I wouldn't have this base layer on. <laughs> oh man, it's going to be so beautiful though today. Yesterday was a short video, and this first clip is almost as long as the whole video yesterday. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. It wasn't that bad, but wasn't a whole lot of views, and a lot of the terrain was kind of the same over and over as it went down, like an old, uh, I'm not really sure what it was, some kind of old road, stone road that might have been for, like, railroad or something. I'm not really sure, but I uh, had some nice rock formations. Besides that, I was just kind of grinding out the miles, and uh, today... Uh, obviously, in the more rocky section now of Pennsylvania, uh, you know, for the next 60 miles of trail before hitting Jersey, it will be a lot more rocks. But there's really no part of Pennsylvania that's just all rocks all day long. So it'll still have some cruisy part of the trail, too, with not, not a whole bunch of incline or decline. So let's get the day going. Let's conquer and enjoy. One thing I didn't mention on yesterday's video was uh, yesterday was the first time this year so far that I found a tick on me. Um, you know, I check quite often, but yesterday was just a random find. And the fact that, you know, I normally look on my skin and my hair and my beard, 
you know, always pretty much ever since it started getting warmer out. Uh, and spring kind of started peeking its head through. Uh, last year, the first tick I had was in Pennsylvania, the southern part, Waynesboro, when I came in across the border. And I found one like in my hip, but it was already half in me. <laughs> it wasn't engorged, so that was a good thing. But then after that, wow, it was like five or 10 ticks a day I was seeing. And they weren't always on me. Sometimes they were on my tent or what else. So I, I tried to check off and uh, you can't find them all though. That's, that's the problem. So, uh, you know, I, I'm prepared. I have things I need in case I ever did get a tick bite. And especially if I started getting a rash or something, you might not know about it until after the fact. But yesterday I was pretty lucky with the random find. Uh, it's like combing through my hair on the trail. I say combing, but <laughs> with my fingers just doing that. And I get to the back here, right where my hair is longer off the hairline. And uh feel like something lumpy, like... And I just thought my hair was like tangled up or something. So I go to pull it out and I realize that's not my hair. And I just pull it out. It's not on my skin or anything. It was just tangled up in my hair and it was a tick, but it was one of the bigger ones. So that's good. They don't uh, carry the disease. I don't know the scientific name, but the smaller ones are the ones you need to worry about. That's the easy way to remember. <laughs> the small ones can give you Lyme and all these other diseases. The bigger ones, I'm sure they can, but that's not the ones to worry about. Uh, but anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't trying to bite me or get in my skin or anything at that point. So I don't know if it just had gotten in my hair or if it had been there for a while. It was just tangled up. I don't know. But I got that out and sure enough, did a check right away to make sure I didn't have any other ones on me. But time to start paying attention to that. Even more so because Lyme disease is not fun. I haven't had it, but... A lot of the symptoms that come with Lyme disease, I would probably be pretty bad on me because of the fact I already have some of those symptoms, like at all times anyway, like heightened nervous system, heightened senses, uh, nerve pain, stuff like that. I mean, I have pain every day, you know, which is part of getting older and part of the health that I have been through, you know, several years ago and, you know, still fight through every day to make sure that I stay as healthy as I can and I mean gonna have bad health problems you know everybody does at some point uh but the osteoporosis and some of the pains that that give like through the osteoarthritis and such it goes along with it all those things you know are basically symptoms <laughs> of Lyme except much worse with Lyme but it's it's a nervous thing you know it, it hits the nervous system a lot so I don't want it, is my point. <laughs> so I'm going to do everything I can to stay on top of that and be proactive. So it's that time of year. Time to watch the ticks. Get those ticks off instead of getting ticked off. <laughs> yeah, I said that. I went there. Uh huh. I dropped all my rocks over there. Can somebody help me pick them up? <laughs> That's what I think of every time I see a big pile of rocks like that. It looks like just a bunch of toys that nobody picked up. Like the mountain was playing with some rocks and just left them there. And put your rocks back, mountain, when you're done. <laughs> Just finished that pretty big climb. I think it's about 800 feet. Basically getting back up to uh, the ridge line of Hawk Mountain here. And it wraps around Hawk Mountain to a nice overlook that uh, we should be seeing here soon. But as you can see, once it gets up to the ridge line, the trail gets really nice again. So the rocks don't last forever. <laughs> pretty much every time there's rocks. It might be a half a mile or so. And 
there's obviously sections it's a little longer than that but the point is they don't last forever you get back to this kind of trail for a reprieve so uh pip which is uh the shuttle driver i use in pine grove uh definitely uh, use pip when you're in the area local knows the area well very professional very timely which is very important to me always early well i don't know always but <laughs> early with me uh which is good that's always good i was raised <laughs> if you're on time you're late <laughs> always be early so it's awesome but anyway pip even uh mentioned something that <laughs> i thought was a good way of putting it uh talking to some other hikers in the car on the shuttle that uh oh how was it said um oh that the rocks last until you're about sick of the rocks <laughs> and then you get a reprieve with a nice cruisy section of trail and so far that's been about right <laughs> it's like every time you're like okay i've done enough rock for a minute <laughs> and then it goes back to cruisy so that's pretty cool uh, i think a lot of and, and I'll, I'll give a full review at the end of pennsylvania for everybody but as of right now with about 50 something miles to go of pennsylvania it's definitely blown out of proportion <laughs> I think people just get sick of the rocks. I'm not a big fan of huge rocks, or I mean, not, sorry, huge rocks I actually kind of like, but I'm not a fan of a huge amount of rocks, but at the same time, it's fun to have that terrain change and climb up and down and feel like you're mountain goading it. <laughs> That's fun sometimes, uh, but it definitely is not as bad as some people fear monger, <laughs> make you feel like it's gonna be nothing but climbing rocks up to the sky for 200 and something miles. It definitely has its moments of cruisiness, not much elevation. And uh, then there's rocks thrown in, and obviously there's certain sections that's much worse than rocks. But I'll give a full review at the end of Pennsylvania so you know exactly what Fortune thinks about Pennsylvania. Right now, I'm telling you, I love it. I love the rocks. I love the views. Um, I love the mountains, but there's not many mountains here. You know that, that I love those summits, but it's okay. Terrain change once in a while. It's pretty cool being able to see something different. So, continuing on, looks like I have a hiker here in front of me. That's cool because I haven't seen anybody yet today. So, nice people are out here enjoying it. But uh, continuing on, and uh, should be a really cool outlook here coming up soon on some cliffs. down right here <laughs> step over see blow down oh my goodness tangled up in the weeds look at this beauty this particular rock outcropping slash cliff called Dan's pulpit. I'm thinking Dan might have been a preacher. And this was his pulpit. <laughs> I don't know who he was preaching to. But go get him, Dan. Beautiful view. Beautiful sanctuary. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. <laughs>
coming down these rocks is tougher than going up them. <laughs> I feel like I can skip around and jump around just fine when they're flat or going up, coming down. I definitely go slower. <laughs> I hold on to the rocks a little more when I'm like going down a steep step or a diagonal step or a slanted rock face or uh, anything like that for stability. But going up them, I'm like, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> it's definitely more fun that way, <laughs> I will say. Can't they just make the rocks where they just go up and up and up and up and up and up and then never come down? <laughs> Big old rock wall. Almost makes me feel like I'm back in Maryland. <laughs> Stopped at a shelter here about uh, eight or nine miles into the day, but I'm hungry, so <laughs> stop. Gonna have some combos, some cheese. Got a couple more in there, so I might have more than just the one. Some peanut butter, some chips. Got some donuts in there, or Pop Tarts maybe. Maybe a Snickers bar, I don't know. Uh, but I'm hungry, so I'm gonna drink up and eat up. And somebody else is here at the shelter over inside there, and they said, hey, I'm gonna go down to the spring and take a little shower or bath. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think that's exactly how I said it too. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, and I said, uh, you know, I said, okay. And he says like, can you watch my stuff? I'm like, well, how long are you gonna be? And he said like, like 15 minutes. I'm like, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 15 minutes. <laughs> After 15 minutes, I'm gone because it's only gonna take me like five or 10 minutes to eat and be packed up and going again. But I'll, I'll hang out for 15 minutes for you to do that. Uh, but you better get back. So I'm gonna take 15 minutes to eat and then I'm out. Then I'm on the trail heading towards Knife's Edge. Woohoo! About 10 miles into the day, uh, right around 2,000 of elevation, I think. A little less than that. Not too much elevation so far. One big climb and little ups and downs besides that. A lot of rocks, obviously, in the first, uh, I don't know, seven, eight miles. Pretty cruisy the last couple, pretty much after the shelter. Talking about the shelter, <laughs> they're eating. Definitely stretch that out to the 15 minutes backpacks on I'm ready to take off and wait for this dude to come back probably was over 15 minutes but I gave him a couple extra minutes and he came back so I was taking off this dude had the guts to ask me after I watched his stuff for 15 minutes like do you have any cash do you have any money you could give me I'm like excuse me he was like do you have any cash you could give me I'm like no have a nice day have a great hike <laughs> I'm really not a cold-hearted person, I swear. I give a lot. I don't give when people ask me, and especially after I just watch your stuff. <laughs> you should be offering me cash. <laughs> Actually, you shouldn't. I wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of odd because I've never seen that out here. Somebody just asked me for cash at a shelter. <laughs> my oh my. It takes all types. <laughs> and to add something else, because that's what I do is add something else. <laughs> Uh, I would, and I have, given to people who have asked. I should rephrase that. I was talking more about the people who panhandle and pester you for cash or money versus actually having a need and actually doing something to try to make money. That is in the outside world of the forest and the wilderness. Obviously, that's much different. Uh, this was just odd. I don't know this guy. <laughs> he doesn't know me. We're all alone, like close to this shelter, and he's asking me for money. I like, of course, it put me on the defensive because I'm like, hold on, what's the, like, he tried to rob me or something? He's like, no, that, what, that's not what it was at all. But like, you know, those thoughts go through your head when you're an analytical person like myself. Uh, he just asked so, <laughs> it was so odd the way he asked and like, uh, no, thank you for watching my stuff while I 
went and washed myself in the spring. The spring that I was about ready to go get water out of, by the way. <laughs> Thank God it was a pipe. If it would have been just a pooling spring, I would not have gotten it probably. <laughs> But it was just odd to me. Like, why would you just ask a complete stranger in the middle of the wilderness <laughs> if they have cash? It was odd. So that's all I meant by that, the way he asked it. There's no way that would happen even if I did have cash. But it's a little odd. So anyway, I'm rambling again, <laughs> but I thought I would explain. I'm really not a cold-hearted person. That was just a very odd exchange. That's all. And he just took a bath in the spring. This is similar to yesterday's video where the trail is really wide like it used to be some kind of road or track or something. Uh, real cruisy, quite flat. Blowdown seemed to be the worst thing around here for the last couple miles. Uh, like I said earlier though, it's kind of funny. The rocks tend to break off and give you this trail for a bit to reprieve let you catch up some miles or something <laughs> it's a nice way it works coming up to the nice edge here within a few miles and uh i don't know how long this goes up until then but uh nice to give the legs and everything a little bit of a break before starting to climb up those rocks not that you need a break <laughs> but it's nice because you get uh to move a little quicker, get a little extra speed, get a little extra further for the day. So I really, uh, up to this point, have no complaints at all for Pennsylvania. It's really a great state. Beautiful and, I mean, for not being three, four, five, six thousand up for summits and rain ridge, on, ridge lines, really has some nice views, a lot of greenery. Nice people. Well done, Pennsylvania. Well done. <laughs>